Hi everyone and welcome to Music at Your Library. We are in Treaty 6 territory in the homeland of the Métis. This program is presented with the support of the Saskatchewan Arts Board and the Saskatoon Public Library. My name is Véronique Mathieu, I'm a violinist and a professor at the University of Saskatchewan. Our guest today plays the bassoon. Her name is Stephanie Andverricht and she is the principal bassoonist of the Saskatoon Symphony Orchestra. Hi, my name is Stephanie and I play the bassoon. The bassoon is a member of the woodwind family, which also includes the clarinets, the flutes, and the oboes. But the bassoon is the largest member of that family, which means that it can play the lowest sounds. Now because this is a woodwind, I need to use my air to play on the bassoon. It's made up of many different parts. This little metal bit is called the vocal. And then there are several joints that come apart. When I blow air into my bassoon, I blow it here, and it goes all the way down to the bottom, comes all the way up again, and then out here. If I play my bassoon without this special part called the reed, it sounds like this. Not a lot to hear. That's why I need to use my reed to make sound on the bassoon. This is a double reed, which means there are two pieces of cane tied together. When I blow on the reed by itself, it sounds like this. It sounds a little bit nicer when I put it on the bassoon. In order to play different notes on the bassoon, there are different holes all over the instrument, and I use my fingers to cover these holes. If I uncover everything, the bassoon sounds like this. As I start adding my fingers onto these holes, we get to hear different notes. Now there are holes all over this bassoon. Some of them are covered by my fingers, and others are covered by pressing down keys. And here are the different notes we can hear. The bassoon has quite a large range of sound. I can play high notes, and I can also play really low notes. Some composers, such as Wagner and Nielsen, decided that they wanted the bassoon to play even lower. So, sometimes we have to use a special contraption called a low A extension. If I stick it in the end of my bassoon, I can play one note even lower. When I was younger, I started playing music on a different instrument called the violin. But in grade six, I got to choose a different instrument to play in my school band. I tried all sorts of different instruments and my favorite was the bassoon. What I love about the bassoon is the ability to play all sorts of different styles and moods. If you watch a lot of cartoons or movies, you might notice the sound of the bassoon when someone is feeling very sad. Sometimes on the bassoon, I need to play very, very fast notes. I use my tongue to differentiate those notes. It sounds like this. If I need to play even faster, I'll use my tongue and the back of my throat by saying da ga da ga da ga da ga da. On the bassoon, it sounds like this. When I'm trying to play a beautiful melody, sometimes I add something called vibrato. On a string instrument, you can see this when the string player moves their hand a little bit. For me to create vibrato, I use my diaphragm, so it comes from way down here in my muscles. It sounds like this. I can 
also make some pretty funny noises on the bassoon. One of them is called a multiphonic. It's by putting down the wrong fingers at the same time. My favorite place to play the bassoon is with the Saskatoon Symphony Orchestra. The bassoon has a very special role in the orchestra. It's not one of the loudest instruments, so you might not always notice it, but it is the kind of thing you notice if it's missing. We play a lot of the time with the cellos and the basses and the low brass, covering the bottom end of the sound. You might hear a bass line like this. But sometimes the bassoon gets to be featured in a solo. Some of these solos are a little bit silly. Some of these solos are incredibly beautiful. Here's one from a piece called Scheherazade. <laughs> In order to play the bassoon, we need to use something called a double reed. And I spend a lot of my time making my reeds. My reeds are made from a plant called Arundo donax, which when it grows in Italy or France, looks a little bit like bamboo. This is how it starts out. Then I split this tube into smaller portions and use a machine called a gouger to take out the pulpy inside. Then. It looks like this. After that, I use something called a shaper to make it look like this. I scrape on the sides. And then I use a profiler to carve out even more and take off some of the bark. After that, I'm able to take this piece, fold it in half, tie it with some wires and some string, and eventually make a bassoon reed. These are some of the tools that I use to make my reeds. When I'm putting the finishing touches on my reed, I'll use a knife, sandpaper, or files. This is called a plaque, and I put it in between the blades of my reed so that I can work on each blade separately. This is my knife and it is very sharp. I'm going to play a piece called The Sorcerer's Apprentice. This is an excerpt from an orchestral piece, and when the whole orchestra is playing on stage, there are four bassoons that play this part together. I'm going to play a piece now by Georges Bizet that's from his opera entitled Carmen. This part that features the bassoon is called the Dragoons. <laughs> Here's a nursery tune you might recognize. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about the bassoon today 
And now we're going to say goodbye. <laughs>